Morning all. Morning. I haven't brought this. They provided this. I'm, it's the first time with a Madonna mic, so I'll try my best. This morning I'm talking about mobile user experience. Um, we're still human is the kind of subtitle of this presentation. It's kind of um, my kind of five rules I have for mobile user experience. I'm just going to chat through some of the things I've learned. Um, I've been doing mobile since 2009 uh, when I made my first app. Uh, I've done loads of mobile sites since then, a, a few top selling apps like Tour de France as previously mentioned. Um, I've worked with Sony to do mobile applications for them and done a, quite a, a huge plethora of mobile sites as well. So I'm just going to talk through some of the things I've learned and some of my golden rules. I'll try and make it as interesting as possible to keep you engaged. That's my aim and I've got a clicker. So I'm going to tell a story now. Um, I used, when I'm between the ages of 13 and 17, I worked for my dad's engineering company. Um, and being an unskilled laborer, my roles, uh, my duty was to carry around a toolbox, which is really heavy. And it, I usually had to carry it around buildings. And um, the tool, the, where the engineers were going was usually in the basement or the top. And at that age, I was obviously quite weak. Um, I wasn't the strapping lad I am now. I had to carry it to the bottom of the ba into the basement or right to the roof, and that's that really stressful. This really heavy toolbox that I had to carry everywhere. Um, that's that's a cartoon, not a real image of me. Um, but of course, the engineer never used all the tools in the toolbox. I'd be carrying around this massive toolbox, and it only made it only use a few things. So I made a deal would decide at the start of the day what tools were needed and I would carry just those tools um, to the top or the bottom of the building without carrying that massive huge toolbox and if we needed more I'd go and make another trip. So 70% of the time the engineer knew what tools were needed. Um, I wasn't dragging about that massive toolbox all the time and that was obviously much better. So the reason I'm telling you that story is it's an allegory for everything, the thread running through the rest of the presentation. So just bear that in mind. Here's the presentation menu. Here's, here's the meat. So mobile and tablet now accounts to 10 to 20% of all uh, traffic to most websites. So it's really important that mobile user experience is as good as the desktop. These are my rules. Um, we've done the allegor allegorical toolbox story. That's finished. Um, these are the five points I'll be making. Uh, mobile and desktop are different. Shouldn't come as a surprise. Uh, design for the context, not the content. Be bloody brave and resolute. Fourth point is don't be afraid to be good at one or two things. The point five, success isn't the thing existing. And then I'll conclude and tell you exactly what that allegorical toolbox story means if you haven't realized already. Okay, so the first point, mobile and desktop are different. Uh, this shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. Um, let's have a look at some of the differences. So people with their phones are usually up on the move. Desktop, you're sat down in a familiar location. Mobile, you're probably surrounded by lots of people. There's a lot of sensory distractions. Desktop, you're probably just sat alone in a quiet room focusing. Um, with mobile, you're often concentrating on something else. You might be watching X Factor, you might be watching I'm a Celebrity, and you're playing with your phone. It's usually not the primary focus. With desktop, it often is the primary focus. Um, you use on mobile, you are sometimes fitting what you're doing into an idle moment. Uh, on desktop, you've got plenty of time to do what you want. Uh, with mobile, you're holding the device with one hand you, most of the time. Desktop, you can type with both hands. Um, mobile is often a touchscreen device. Same with tablet. Obviously, most of the time, it's a touchscreen device, so totally different context. Um, and on desktop, you've got access to everything on your, in your office and on your computer, and you'll be able to change that content whatever way you want quite easily. Um, with mobile, it's inherently social too. Uh, so, I mean, the whole idea of mobile is that it connects you with other people. Um, you get push notifications on a mobile too, so you're not having to check multiple sites like you would on a desktop. And of course, the biggest difference, it's a much smaller real estate. Uh, the screen real estate, obviously very small on a mobile, whereas on a desktop, you could have a massive screen. So, obviously, 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 mobile and desktop are really different things. Um, so therefore, your, your experiences should be different too, whether you're on a mobile or a desktop. An IA might change, the functionality might change between the two things, everything might change. So my first rule is just remember to be flexible and understand they're completely different platforms. And I think it's sometimes easy to forget that and treat the two the same. So that's point one. Point two is that you should always be designing for the context, not the content. And this is something I battle up against all the time. So responsive 
doesn't solve your mobile problem. Pouring all that content that you have on your desktop and reforming out onto a mobile is not always the solution. You should be constantly thinking, is this content or functionality useful? Does it fit a mobile experience? Is it valuable? Does it deserve to be there? These are questions that you constantly have to ask yourself. You shouldn't be just putting everything in. Here's an example uh, of a client I worked with recently. Um, they're a public sector agency. Their traffic, uh, mobile and tablet accounted for 20% of all their traffic. That what they wanted, to do, they suggested to us, let's do a responsive. Let's just put everything that we've got on our desktop and just put it onto mobile. Um, that's, that's what we need to do, obviously. But obviously, we know that a mobile and desktop are very different things with different contexts. So we looked into the analytics and we found that people on the desktop were going to the home page and then drilling down into different pieces of content, consumer information page. I've got to be that vague because if I told you where they were going, you'd know immediately who I was talking about. Um, but with the mobile context, people were going on the mobile site to go to contact us because they just wanted to call them. But that contact us page was at like a tertiary level. So if you just mimicked the IA, then people on mobile would have to navigate down into that contact us page to do what 70% of people wanted to do. So the context is completely different. You shouldn't be designing for the content. The context is what's crucial to a mobile experience. So mobile users clearly considered contact us to be the most important journey on a mobile site. Therefore, you have to treat it as such. This is another example. Uh, Lewis Silkin, who we worked with, um, developed on a site called Platform. Um, we, when, we, we when we were researching uh, Lewis Silkin and how people used their website on mobile, we discovered that most people were using, the mobile, were using their mobiles to, to find out who they were about to meet in a meeting. They were also trying to find out how to get there. Therefore, when we came around to designing the mobile experience, we knew that these two things were really crucial. Understanding who that person was, getting an idea of the person they were about to meet, and also providing them with the information to actually get to the place to have the meeting. So the mobile experience was geared towards those two things because we knew that was the context. The context in a kind of uh, in a wider sense is that the mobile web operates just before a face-to-face -face meeting. So you're giving them all the information about the, peop the person they're about to meet, understanding their personality. It happens right before that face-to-face -face meeting and al you know, also how to get there. So that is the context of this particular mobile site. It's providing information on who that person is and how to get there. Again, not the content, the context of who's going on that site. This is um, a disaster. But, um, a, a previous agency, just before I joined, they made an app for... Uh, a very well-known car model. Um, and they had all this content about how great this car was and all, loads of pictures of the car and, and the sunset in Valencia. Um, and what they said was, oh, let's put all that content into an app and then we'll make that app and everyone will down, we'll download this app and see how great this car is. Obviously, no one downloaded the app because the content was complete. Like, you could get that content elsewhere. The context just didn't make any sense whatsoever. Don't presume positive outcomes. Just don't think because you're going to provide loads of content that nobody really wants that, that everyone's going to download it. That was obviously a really bad mistake because the context wasn't understood. So the takeaway from this second point is uh, the success of mobile UX is dependent on the human holding it and the situation they're in. Make sure you're solving a problem. Don't, ask, don't answer a question that's not being asked, as we saw with that uh, failed automotive application. Okay, so point three, and I've borrowed from Shakespeare here, some of you will know. Uh, be bloody bra brave and resolute, fearless like Macbeth when you're designing for mobile. Really don't cram everything in. I think that the problem with responsive is that people think that that solves their content problem because you're just putting everything into the mobile experience, but that's not optimum. Don't cram everything in. Every single piece of content should fight for its life. Really wield the ax, because less is more. Nobody wants a mobile app or a site to be like an overstuffed suitcase that you can't close, let alone fit in an overhead bin. Because I often heard uh, in previous agencies, let's give people a, uh, like a Swiss Army knife app full of stuff, but nobody wants that. Everyone wants something fast, quick, stylish, and elegant. 
So this is an example of a client we're working with at the moment. They've been told they're going to lose their, they're a public sector site, and they're going to lose their site when they go to GovUK, because GovUK has really strict governance on the kind of things they can put in there. So they were really terrified. What are we going to do with all our great content? What all these people want? What, how, we, how are they going to live without our great content? We had like one look at their analytics and saw that no one is looking at their great content. And mobile is the same, because you've got that very specific context. You should be using it as an excuse to be really strict on governance and removing content to make it as quick and easy to use as possible. So be bloody bold and resolute with content and functionality. Just give people what they want and you know they're using. These are mobile experiences that I love. They're, they're really fast, stylish, and elegant. Instagram, really quick and easy to use. Bloom FM, really easy to use and navigate. Really simple user interface. Bad ones, Spotify can't stand it. It's rubbish. There's so much going on there. It's so busy. You need pixie fingers to actually use the thing. Um, and there's just an insane amount of functionality in there. It's busy, complex, difficult to navigate and use, which is a bad mobile experience in my book. So the takeaway from this point, all the best mobile experiences that you've used are fast, stylish, and elegant. They're the things you should be looking for. Your mission is to remove the friction which prevents that. And that friction is usually too much content and too much functionality. So the fourth point is be really awesome at one or two things. Like Torval and Dean, really good at ice skating. Uh, put them in a house fire, they'd be rubbish. So being awesome at a few things. The Guardian app is awesome at just summarizing The Guardian. It's not that full, meaty experience of The Guardian. It doesn't have to be. It just summarizes it, which is great. Vine is great at uh, creating and sharing looping videos. It does one or two things just really well, really simple. Vanity Fair have a really elegant, pared-down uh, mobile experience. It's just a kind of summary of Vanity Fair, which is great. The suite setup focuses on mobile use by it streamlines their offering, so it takes away some of the content to fit onto a mobile and makes it a lot easier to use. Instagram is really awesome at one thing, taking and sharing photos, which is great, and it's sold for $1 billion. And Kevin Sistrom knew that. Here's a quote. We knew that if we specialized in photos and did photos really well, that's in some way more powerful than this bundle of everything else. So doing one or two things really well is much better than a whole load of crap that nobody really wants. Here's the takeaway. Make it simple. Be awesome at one or two things. Don't be a toolbox. Fifth point. Uh, success isn't the thing existing. What do I mean by that? So when I worked on that, uh, a previous agency and we did that really terrible app for the, for, the, for the car, we just stuffed content in it, the client said, yeah, but when we do it, we'll be on the app store. That was their measure of success, not whether anyone used it, which is obviously a really bad thing. Again, you hear clients say, yeah, we need to put everything on mobile. All that content needs to be on mobile. That's our measure of success. But three months later, you often find that no one's looking at it. So iterate look back, the measure of success should be that loads of people are using it and enjoying the content. You've got a good spread across all the content. You don't want to be in a situation where no one is looking at it because that's bad. Success isn't that the thing is out there and existing. Success is that it's being used and people are engaging with it. Another example, this is maybe slightly away from mobile. We, we had a client recently who said, oh, we've just launched our big campaign with a YouTube video. They spent thousands on this really polished, amazing video. Put it out there, it's got 30 views after a month pointless. The success isn't the thing existing. Success is the thing being engaged with and being used and having good feedback. So always be looking, as soon as the thing's done, what is working, what isn't working. Iterate, pivot, that's the new word. Test on real people, learn and iterate all the time. See what's working and change things. So let's wrap this up. That's a visual pun, vanilla ice, for those paying attention. Um, to conclude, should be picking the right tools to do the job. Um, don't give users that entire toolbox when just a few tools will suffice because everybody wants a fast, stylish, and elegant mobile experience. Nobody wants that overstuffed suitcase. Um, I know that lots of people, when they do mobile talks, dig out stats, and I, you may have noticed there's not too many stats in here. I've saved my favorite till last. By the end of 2013, there will be more mobile devices on Earth than people. They're taking over, and it's terrifying. Um, Thank you very much for listening. I think I'll be, are we going to do some questions? Okay, great.
So um, I just want to uh, speak on behalf of everybody here. I'm definitely going to have a small suitcase now. <laughs> um, but practically, how do you pare down a, uh, a mobile site and its content? Practically. Um, well, I think we're seeing a move to mobile strategy being the different buckets of content. You should work out when, you, when you're creating an experience what content goes in what buckets. So you, you put different pieces of content in different buckets. And on the desktop, those, you employ all the buckets. And then on mobile, you only employ a few. So it's understanding the context of the user and understanding what functionality they use. And, and, and put essentially, your mobile strategy is just working out what buckets you employ when you're, when you're creating your experience at the start. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, anybody got any questions uh, for Chris? Any hands up? Yep. What about the difference between an app for mobile or an app for a tablet? In terms of real estate, content. Okay. Well, I think um, the projects I've been working on recently, we've found that in terms of tablet, you've got a, a, a real estate big enough for a kind of desktop experience. And certainly, the few clients we've advised recently, we've found that we can offer like 90% of the desktop experience to tablet. But there's a big difference between tablet and phone in terms of the real estate and the functionality. So I would suggest that you could provide a really much fuller, deeper experience on tablet. Like it should be maybe just 10% less than the desktop experience, bearing in mind things obviously like the touchscreen device and the different functionality you've got available within that. Um, but the difference between tablet and mobile is quite a lot. And I think when you, in terms of uh, the mobile experience, you should be cutting things right down um, I won't even try and throw a percentage out there what percentage of the whole experience it should be, but it's substantially less than tablet. I'm going to do two more questions. Anybody else got a question? No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, if you do want to speak to Chris later, I'm sure he'll yeah. be around later, but uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank Cheers. you. Thanks.